So with this webinar, we would like to uh, present you the experience from some uh, countries that had already succeeded in this goal, which is really impressive. And so we will have a host from uh, Spain, uh, Netherlands, Britain, Brit uh, UK, um, Austria and uh, Italy. Uh, so some of them have just been established, some of them have much more experience like the British. So I think that we can learn a lot from them and we can uh, uh, take uh, their experience as an example in order to improve uh, and to have uh, these local committees uh, who have a huge, uh, who may have a huge impact because uh, basically they know the ground where they play and so uh, they may uh, be much closer to trainees and students so the effect in enrolling them in IR may be much more effective than we can do at the, at the European level. So for this reason ATF really would like to improve this kind of initiative and to push in this sense to help uh, each um, country to establish the IR uh, training committee. So uh, it's a pleasure to co-moderate this um, uh, webinar with my uh, colleague and friend Rock Desman, who is my vice chairman, and uh, I would like to 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 give him the the, the chance to uh, introduce each um, each uh, uh, speaker. So, Rock, please. Thank you, Gigi. Uh, so, let me first introduce you um, to the to our second to our first moderator this was um, dr uh, luigi roberto uh, luigi cazzato he's an interventional radiologist from strasbourg and also a chairman of european trainee forum and he's uh, he he will be uh, moderating this webinar with me as he already said we will have uh, five presentations from young interventional radiologists from five different european countries who all, who all have um, established uh, European uh, training committees for young interventional radiologists in their country. Um, the, first, uh, the first speaker is coming from Spain and his name is uh, Dr. Ignacio Gonzalez Webra and he will be presenting uh, their uh, his and their uh, experience on how they establish an IR trainee committee in Spain. So if Ignacio is uh, prepared to start the, the, his presentation, I think he can begin. Thank you for your kind introduction, Rock. Good afternoon, everybody. So we just established the, our committee two months ago. So I'm going to talk about our small experience. OK. So I work on these hospitals, I'm very busy, but if you want to do something, you can do it. That's one of the first messages that I wanted to say. When I joined ETF, like four or five months ago, I wanted to get to know how it works. And I also knew this web from International Radiology Juniors, and I was interested in how they had their own committee in United Kingdom. So I think it's a nice web that you, all of you should, say, should, should check. This is our committee. Uh, we wanted to, inter, to have uh, different roles. So the first uh, of all, uh, we have one student, his name is Brace, and then we have two residents, three fellows, and we are three like, junior members with less than 10 years of experience. I think it's important that we have a, at least one member of its position because we need to know how people think. Now we are not students, but uh, we can learn a lot from students. So the first thing we did when we created the committee was to create different uh, profiles in the different social media. So we uh, have profile in Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Facebook. The one we use the most is Twitter, and we have to get to, to increase our visibility in the other social media. We also have an idea, and we have established that we are going to make one monthly webinar 
of only 20 minutes because I think everyone is really uh, tired of webinars because there are hundreds. But if we can make a, a small webinar that will also be recorded in YouTube, uh, I think people can watch it uh, when they have free time. The first uh, topic we, we are going to, to talk is about endovascular treatment of pulmonary embolism. And our idea is that uh, all those videos are going to be in YouTube and we are going to um, like uh, retake our Spanish society YouTube web because nowadays uh, we don't use it very much. And I think YouTube is a good platform. We are also going to participate in our annual Congress next year. And I don't have much things to talk, but I want to encourage everybody that they can get in touch with their scientific committee of their society. They can create the committee uh, or the subcommittee and they have to create content in social media. When more people know about that subcommittee, uh, we can create more events, more formation. We also want to get money in order to increase the scholarships in order to become interventional radiology in Spain, because nowadays we only have four scholarships. And thank you very much for your attention. If there is any question, I can answer them. So thank you very much, um, Ignacio. Uh, for now, we don't have uh, any questions, so perhaps it's uh, best if we continue with our presentations. Uh, and the next presenter will be uh, is coming from uh, Netherlands, and so his name is uh, Dr. Samim Nizak, and uh, we will start with his presentation right now. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Rock, for the kind uh, introduction. Um, so, um, Marshal Samim uh, is my name, and uh, I'm in my fifth year of uh, radiology, which is the last year of radiology residency in the Netherlands, and uh, I'm also in my second year of IR traineeship. Uh, currently, I'm working in the uh, University Medical Center of Utrecht in the Netherlands, and together with uh, Dennis Kies, and Ayub Charabili, uh, I formed the um, Interventional Radiology Junior Committee. So as the um, title of this um, slide depicts, uh, we are um, a young junior committee uh, only established in 2019. Um, and uh, we have still a long, head of, uh, a long road uh, ahead of us. And uh, we are really happy to learn from our colleagues uh, around Europe. Um, and during this talk, I will explain something about how we have uh, established our junior committee, uh, what uh, our role and functions are, and uh, what we have uh, achieved so far, and briefly the uh, plans for the near future. So before I move on to the Dutch um, junior committee, I feel like I need to explain something about how the uh, radiology society is organized in the Netherlands. Uh, so in the Netherlands, we have the Society of uh, Radiology, which is abbreviated as NVVR, and the Dutch Society of Interventional Radiology, which is abbreviated as NVIR, is um, uh, falls under the Society of Radiology. And um, uh, the NVIR has uh, several subcommittees. Um, uh, of course, the Executive Committee, but also the uh, Scientific Society, which is abbreviated as WCR, CIR, and the Regulation and Accreditation Society and the Education and Training Society. Uh, so as I mentioned, the Dutch uh, IR Junior Committee was established in 2019 after a call from uh, the NVIR, so the Dutch Society of Interventional Radiology. And uh, we have um, three members. Uh, Dennis Kies is the chair member. Um, myself am um, uh, part of the sci scientific society of the um, uh, Dutch Society of Interventional Radiology. And Ayub is uh, also part of the education and training, uh, training society. 
So each of us are uh, designated to one of the subcommittees of the Dutch Society of Interventional Radiology. Uh, and in this way, we are actually uh, part of the um, discussions, um, which are uh, um, the discussions of the Dutch Society of Interventional Radiology. Um, and lastly, um, it is uh, um, a sign that each uh, uh, that the Dutch representative for the ETF is also uh, should be a part of the uh, a member of the junior committee. And uh, lastly, um, we are all uh, IR traineeships, so we don't have uh, uh, students in the uh, in the junior committee. Maybe something for the future. Uh, but we are trying to have at least one female member in the uh, in the junior committee as well. Uh, so the Dutch uh, uh, Junior Committee has several functions. Uh, first of all, the function and roles are in line with the uh, roles of the Dutch Society of Interventional Radiology, except that we really advocate for the junior members. Uh, we are in direct contact with the junior members and try to notify uh, all junior members on any news and updates from the Dutch Society of Interventional Radiology, any news on education opportunities and job opportunities. And uh, we also uh, are able to provide feedback to the Dutch Society of Interventional Radiology members on uh, important matters concerning the junior members, as we are uh, uh, part of the, uh, of the annual meetings and also uh, all the scientific, uh, the meetings of the scientific and the training and education society. So what we have achieved so far, uh, I think it's important that we have a solid organization now as part of the Dutch Society of Interventional Radiology and are part of the uh, frequent uh, meetings with the executive board and the subcommittees. Um, and uh, what we have achieved so far are, um, we have uh, sent out several surveys um, in order to find out uh, opinions of our uh, junior members. Um, these teams are uh, scientific or educational teams and our uh, latest topic uh, was uh, concerning the fellowships and how the young interventional radiologists and our um, IR residents uh, feel about the fellowships uh, currently and how we can improve these fellowships. So we are still working on the results of these, uh, uh, this last survey. So briefly about uh, our plans for the near future. In general, we are aiming to uh, create a platform for the junior members to stay up to date. Um, and for this purpose, uh, we are uh, working or thinking about a website after the example of our UK colleagues. Um, this way we want to um, attract more junior, um, uh, uh, junior members, uh, to stay up to date, we want to attract more students uh, and um, uh, uh, tell them uh, about uh, interventional radiology and uh, also uh, simulate and uh, facilitate research by junior members, uh, which for which we have the support of the Scientific Society of Interventional Radiology. Uh, we also uh, want to provide um, by means of this platform also an overview of the available fellowships and education opportunities as we feel that right now um, uh, this is not as trans transparent as we would uh, like it to be. Uh, finally, uh, as part of the uh, European Trainee Forum, uh, we are working on internships for international students and also thinking about interview series on women in ER. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Marcel, for that was really a great, great presentation. Um, it's impressive. It looks like you're, um, you're, you are really well organized and I have a lot of questions for you, but we'll probably um, come to the questions at the end of the old presentations. Uh, I would like to um, tell to all the attendees, if you have any questions, please feel free to write them below, down below in the questions and answer section. And at the end of the presentation, we will choose your questions and we will ask them to the, uh, to the presenters. 
So um, we will now proceed with our presentations and with our next presenter is Dr. Christian Neumann from Austria and he will present their uh, trainee committee. Please, Christian. Thank you very much for the kind invitation and thank you for the kind introduction. Um, I will present you, if it's possible to proceed, just a second. Uh, uh, it's okay. Uh, I have some issues. Just a second for the, ah oh, yeah, it's working now. Um, I, I want to introduce you into the uh, UGIA. We are the Interventional Radiology Trainee Committee in Austria. My name is Christian Neumann. I'm currently the chairman of this small uh, subgroup of the UGIA. Uh, the UGIA is the Austrian Society of Interventional Radiology and the UGIA, the young or still young uh, interventional radiologists uh, found their way together in already 2010. So it's our 10th anniversary this year. Interestingly, it was initially an industry-driven initiative by Boston Scientific. A salesperson said, why don't we uh, found a platform to get together all the young people that want to do interventional radiology and have some ideas, have some experience. And this idea has grown and grown. Uh, in Austria, we have about 200 interventional radiologists and about 100 are on our mailing list for the UGIA. So it's about half. Uh, and we also see people that were initially in the UGIA and now are um, adult radiologists, adult interventionalists that still connect to this platform, which is very nice uh, to grow and to know each other more and more. Um, we understand ourselves as a platform for not only education, but mostly for professional exchange of young interventionalists. We address mainly residents and young specialists that already have experience in angiography, uh, like some months or uh, one or two years. We don't have students in our mailing list. That could be an idea for the future to get to know the interventional radiology for people that don't know this from their, from their studies but not yet. We hold meetings. We don't only have this platform. It's like um, we get together on big meetings and big congresses, but we have special meetings three to four times per year. And this is the already historic picture of uh, our first uh, meeting in 2010. And as you see, tomorrow is our 10th birthday and we are already baking the cake. Um, Due to the geographic situation in Austria, we have Austria East and Austria West meetings and some joint meetings uh, that are a side of big congresses or bigger meetings. That's due to the fact that Austria is a very long and slim country and has Alps and everything, so, so it's not so easy to get from one point to another. That's why we organize it like this, this that Austrian East Jürgier uh, meets in Vienna and the Austrian West UGA meets in Linz, in Salzburg, in Innsbruck, or in Sams. This is due to the fact that we try to have small meetings for 10 to a maximum of 20 people to be able to discuss uh, cases, to have a familiar atmosphere, to, um, uh, to be able to speak up. And this is, this is really meant to be a platform and not a, a, um, like a, a, uh, seminars where just one people talk, uh, one guy talks or one person talks. Uh, from time to time, once per year, we have joint meetings West and East together um, when there are bigger uh, congresses or uh, events where everybody gets together. Our idea is not only, of course, the professional exchange, but also, and this is, uh, in my opinion, the most important thing, the opportunity for networking of trainees uh, in Austria, it is a fact that there are a lot of small hospitals with 200 or 300 beds with just one or a maximum of two interventional radiologists, and they need to know uh, other people to, uh, to uh, 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 get to know other inf interventions, get to know other ideas of how they work. And also we try to give an opportunity for connection to experienced colleagues. Uh, to ask questions, to discuss problems. These meetings always consist of a morbidity and mortality part where when one can discuss cases that did not go out to good or had problems with them, which is, as I already mentioned, very important for colleagues from smaller hospitals that have no feedback or too few feedback. We also try to organize internships and fellowships 
um, especially also for colleagues from smaller hospitals that they are, have the opportunity to go to bigger centers and to get to know their work. These meetings have generally one expert uh, that has a, a presentation state of the art, one chosen topic, and then young colleagues bring along their cases, bring along one complicated or one challenging case, and we discuss it, we, we answer open questions, we try to connect uh, and try to uh, try to discuss it openly without um, without uh, blame, blaming some, somebody. And of course, it is important to have incentives. So we get together to go to the Heurigen or we have a nice dinner all together, which is of course important. Not only the professional part is important, also the social part plays a very important role in our idea. This is, as I already mentioned, two or three or 10 times our 10th anniversary now, uh, which is, uh, uh, followed by relaunch, we tried to digitalize. We are forced, of course, as everybody uh, suppose else on this panel uh, to do webinars now. Um, the last webinar was a very good one, a very big one. As I said, we have a mailing list of 100, 100 people and we had 65 people online uh, live, which was a real success for us. We tried to uh, build up an online library of presentations. This has the cost as, that um, the Ögia and the Degia uh, according to, uh, um, similar to the DG has interventional modules, uh, recanalization, embolization, etc. And we try to build up a kind of library so that uh, one can have state-of-the-art talks in a short, uh, in short versions um, to get to know the principles. Where's the future evolution of this platform? We will see, we try, uh, as we said, as I already said, to digitalize more and more, to improve our networking, to improve our social media um, appearances, to have exchange of trainees and internships, um, maybe also in our neighboring countries. And we try to profit from the innovative um, ideas that our young colleagues have to um, maybe improve ourselves as well. Was what we also tried to do is to become an associated board member of the UGIA, the Austrian Society of the Adult Interventional Radiologists, to improve education standards, to improve uh, also the exchange of ideas, the exchange of education. Thank you very much. Uh, and um, um, thank you also for the kind invitation. And um, I hand the mouse back to you. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, Christian. Uh, so this was a really impressive presentation. Uh, it looks like you're really well organized. You have a really well organized committee. Um, we will, I'm sure there will be a lot of questions, especially regarding the exchanges. And so it's, it's really impressive. Um, we have to move on. So we're starting with our fourth presenter. Um, so the fourth presenter will be uh, Greg, Dr. Gregory Macris, he's coming from London, United Kingdom, um, and he's quite well known around here. He's past chairman of European Training Forum, and he is also past chairman of British Society of International Radiology Training Committee. So he's the perfect uh, to present their experience and how they started, what they are doing and what they will be doing. So Greg, please. Thank you, Rock. Um, you know, for those, for those who know me, they uh, they know that how much how passionate I am about uh, trainee committees and how we have been how much we have been talking about this the last few years with the trainee with the European Trainee Forum. Um, and I'm very glad to see today that you know there are so many new and uh, older trainee committees around the, around Europe. I think I think uh, the role of trainee committees is very important and. Uh, that's that's where the first part of my presentation is mostly attributed to this how why I think training committees are important and why I think that we need to have more of these. So I think we can start my presentation now. Um, and that's why I have uh, chosen a bit of a provocative title. I don't know, Roman, I can't say I can't see the slides. Yeah. So I, th I thought that before I start talking about the, the BSIR, I should start talking about, about this. And 
I'm, I'm a big believer that interventional radiology can learn many things from other industries and um, the retail industry is, uh, is no exception to that. I think that uh, when it comes to learning tricks about how we can improve our performance, about how we can be better at networking, how we can better, you know, marketing what we do, then uh, we can learn, we can definitely learn from other, from other industries. And um, next slide, please. I don't know, can I, how do you, okay, next slide. Can I control the slides or? So that's a very recent article from the Harvard Business Review. Um, if, you, if you don't, if you haven't heard of this journal, it's, it's not an IR journal, obviously, it's a business journal. So I would definitely recommend you to occasionally, I think it's, it's, um, it's printed month, monthly. And uh, it has some very interesting um, case studies, business case studies mostly. Uh, and I think it gives you a very good, a very good idea about you know other markets and other industries and how they work and you know tricks that can be transferable to other organizations like our societies, our intervention real societies. And that's a very interesting article that caught my eye uh, a few weeks ago. And I thought that we should uh, we should have a look at it because I think it's very relevant to the role of uh, interventional radiology trainee societies. Um, next slide, please. So what problems do we have in, um, in interventional radiology and what problems did I... So I started working with junior trainee committees back in 2015 when we started the trainee forum. And then as Rock mentioned, I was the... Um, uh, I was the chair of the trainee committee of the trainee forum and then the vice chair and chair of the British trainee committee. So, and the problems that I've seen both committees, so the European and the British level are, all, are almost the same. The, well, the first and biggest problem in my opinion is that we have a, a relatively disengaged uh, trainee uh, group some, sometimes and we, we especially at the beginning we thought that we found that it was very we struggling to engage with our trainee um, our trainee members especially at the British level and the second one was that we had a very um, weak response when it was coming to the changing um, uh, market or environment conditions. So I know that many people, when they hear about markets, they think, that, okay, what's, how, how is that relevant to IR and why? When I'm saying market, I mean, it, IR is a market to start with, but you think of that as an environment, an environment where we operate on. And as we as we all know very well, this environment changes all the time. The competition changes all the time. The kit changes all the time. The, the business model that we operate on changes and the business model that we have in every country are very different. So we need to be, we need to be dynamic. We need to be able to change. And that's the second problem that we have. That's usually, we are very slow to this change. And of course, it's not only our, our societies, it's not only interventional radiology that has this problem, okay? It's uh, most specialists have this problem. And, and this is where we come in, I think. And this is where the following example from the industry comes in, into play. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So for those who are, uh, for those ones who are into fashion, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not a big fashion fashion um, you know I'm not big into fashion, uh, um, but those of you who are, you, I'm sure you know, I'm mean, probably you all know Gucci and Prada. Um, they both had the same issue. In 2015, they had declining sales, declining market shares. They were struggling. They were struggling. They were struggling to adopt the, the digital revolution. They were struggling to uh, approach the millennials. They were, they were struggling to um, sell stuff to the, um, the younger consumers. And both of them, they followed, and each of them followed a different path. Prada decided to just move up, continue doing what they were doing, just hire more executives, more consulting firms, just try to find a solution using the traditional avenues. Gucci, on the other hand, did something completely radical for, for back then. Basically, what they did is they 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 found they they created an open process through which they recruited young talent from their organization, and they tried through using that talent as a, as a shadow as a shadow board that was shadowing the executive board, and having re these two executive and shadow boards, they were having regular meetings and they were trying to identify problems. And, and solutions, of course. And of course, the, the obvious advantage that Gucci had in, into that uh, approach was that 
this this saddle board was bringing new ideas, was bringing fresh blood into into the equation, which is something that Prada didn't have. So it's as we as we are saying, it's uh, as Einstein used to say, it's 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 the definition of madness is trying to solve the same problem, doing the same thing again and again and again. And you see that in many industries. Intervention reality is not is not different. Okay, we have seen trying to solve problems that we have using traditional ideas and obviously these things don't work so this is where interventional this is where shadow boards or, tra or training committees come into play that they can bring all these new ideas all this enthusiasm and energy and we see that all the time and of course next slide please and this is obviously, um, and that's the CEO of Gucci. That's his, that's his vision, and this is what he did back then. He brought talented people into the into the group. He he gave them responsibilities. He did, he wasn't afraid to get, to let them speak freely about their ideas. It doesn't mean that every idea they had these junior, junior guys that was you know they used it, but at least they listened to it. And many of those ideas they had, they were useful in terms of. Um, making a difference into the organization. Uh, next slide, please. And as you can see, it worked. I mean, back in, uh, we're fa uh, fast forward to 220, you can see the, the, the difference. Caring Group is the, in, in red, is the, is the massive conglomerate that controls Kutsi, basically, for those who didn't know. I didn't know that. And uh, you can see the massive difference. I'm, I'm, obviously, I'm not saying that the shadow groups were the main reason of, of this. But according to the research that Harvard Business Review, the Harvard Business Review did, it was one of the main reasons. Next slide, please. So what are the, the main benefits when we're talking in other industries? What are the main benefits? And we will try to translate those benefits into IR, okay? So we're, we're talking, I mean, one of the main things is you increase the visibility into millennials, okay? And that's, I mean, that makes sense. I don't I didn't translate that. I don't need to uh, elaborate on that. But when you have a, a young committee, you can very easily talk to students, you can very easily talk to junior doctor, doctors and tell them why IR is great, what are the benefits, because you're you're closer to that process. It's very easy for me to talk to someone who is a trainee now, who is a student. It's much more difficult when you're 10 years down the line, you're a consultant. Other benefits include uh, business model reinvention and process design. And you're, again, you're going to think, okay, what about, what about our business model? When we're talking about business model, you should think about what IR used to be and what IR what we want IR to be. IR used to be a very technical specialty. It was a jacks of all trade kind of specialty. We do a bit of everything. We are problem solvers and that's it. We have seen that this is not really, it's not gonna really, it's not gonna serve us very well in the future if we carry on being like this. And that's why we have to think out, out of the box a bit and think how we can, what else we can do. And that's changing the business model for me in IR means being more clinical. So doing more clinics, doing more ward rounds, spending more time with our patients and less time in doing diagnostic radiology, basically. So again, this is what we mean business model, okay? And then when we're talking about private practice, I mean, you, we can learn many lessons from what happens in, in, in the US, for example, about how private practices, the OBLs, the out of base labs, uh, uh, sorry, the OBLs, it's, they're like independent practices outside the hospital, they work in a private setting, and basically that day case, they do day cases and, and so on. And they're very, they've, been, they've been working very well for, uh, for most people. And of course, when we're talking organizational transformation, we're talking about how, what the organization can benefit from all this. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, through my experience from, from Cersei, we have seen a lot of benefits to the main organization uh, as a result of bringing new ideas into it. So we had new initiatives, um, we had new ideas about projects that you know would have happened otherwise. We had a lot of um, interaction with our with the more junior base of the society, which which was much easier when you have a junior arm for the for the society. And of course, it's much easier for us because we have a bit more time. We're more um, we're not like you know the the executive committee can't do everything. So and that's why we come in. And of course, that's the other big thing that I want to say that you know as as trainee committees, we should strive not to just be another committee. We should be the most energetic part of the society and if we can't do that then we shouldn't be if we don't have the time to do that then we shouldn't be part of the committee i think we should have to be very you know uh, relentless when it comes to approaching the right talent for these societies you don't just want people who come in for the for the cv uh, 
Next slide, please. So, okay, that was, uh, I think that's enough about business. Uh, so uh, the BSIR experience, the, the BSIR training committee is one of the oldest uh, training committees, probably one of the, it's probably, if not the oldest, one of the oldest in, in, in Europe. Um, we have um, we have elections every year. We have a quite big committee group. Um, the way it works is that every committee group, every group, every person, every member of the committee shadows one of the members of the executive committee. And then we have also certain task forces that are more independent in terms of what they do. So we have a task force for uh, social media, of a task force for uh, junior recruitment, of a, social, um, um, of a task force for uh, global health and, and, and so on. And um, and what we have seen is that every year we have more and more people. I mean, I mean, five years ago, I remember that we we had sort of you know, hit a wall. We couldn't get enough people to nominate themselves for the for the elections. But you know, after we started doing more things and after we started being more active, we saw that we also also had more people being involved and being engaged. And my my advice to those of you guys who are starting their committees now is that just don't be don't be afraid to give responsibility to people. Just just let them be involved just hear to their listen to their ideas and um, just give response but delegate don't try to do everything yourself next slide please so this is the commit from last year um, so this year uh, our, our, our past chair is going to be Connor Ailman and the, the current chair is going to be uh, Jim, uh, both of, of them good friends of mine. Uh, and as you can see, we have a very diverse uh, group of people. I think that's also very important, have as much diversity as possible into the committee. Uh, because again, diversity leads to better ideas, more ideas and, and uh, more innovative ideas, which is the main thing. Next slide, please. And of course, it's the main objective that we have, we have one education is one of the one of the main things. Um, but we try to we try to branch out. We don't want just to do the the educational stuff. We wanted to do other things as well. But we always start with the um, organizing the BSIR training training day, which is like um, it usually follows the annual BSIR conference. It's a day that's dedicated to our trainees. So we have workshop, we have lectures. So the trainees stay after the annual conference and they take part into the training day. We also have the advanced practice course that BSIR uh, organize every year, which is uh, a course dedicated to fifth and sixth year trainees. And we, we have uh, live workshops, live cases, and, um, and so on. But apart from the educational component, I mean, the main thing is to create networks. So we try to create networks with, you know, the, obviously with the European side and with other societies. So we want to, to be in touch with you guys. We want to learn what you're doing because there are so many things that we can do together if we work together. I think that's the main benefit of having ETF, that it can allow us to, it brings everybody together. And that's, that's, the, that's the main thing, not only for social reasons, which is also great, but also because because we can, uh, you know, as, as a group, if we work together, we can do so many more things. Uh, recruitment among medical students is a big thing for us as well. We try to uh, organize, um, uh, especially pro-COVID, in the, in the year before COVID, we organized uh, five or six um, educational events, and if we not, and we didn't always organize them ourselves, but very often we supported the people who were organizing them, and that was the the, the, the best part about it. That these some of these um, courses were organized by medical students or junior doctors themselves, and we just gave them some support, and some encouragement. And it's amazing what you know what they can do if you just. Um, give them some guidance and connect them to the industry so they can get some funding so again find the right people let them uh, you know let give them space to do their own thing help them um, not, uh, you know give them some guidance and of course make sure that you are the link between them and the the executive committee which is also uh, they, they have the main experience and they have to be aware of, uh, of what's happening and the last thing that's going to be our challenge for this year is we're trying to create a research network so we try to find uh, like um, uh, people who are interested in research around the UK and we try to create a research network around around those centers so we can like do national audits or create national registries. It's not going to be like a massive randomized control trial but we can start with something with small study maybe a small audit or a, sm a small registry 
and see how it goes. Basically, you identify the people who are interested in research and you let them uh, and you help them out grow in that field, which is also very, very important in IR because we, I don't think we do enough research as it is. Next slide, please. So yeah, and most more, be the voice of junior IRs. Uh, I mean, it's very important. I mean, very often, you know, there is there might be a bit of a difference in opinion in the way we see things and the way the executive council might see things. But you know, there's, it's always about letting them know how we feel about things. Is there very often there is, you know, there, there might be concerns about training, there might be complaints. If we don't bring them to their attention, nobody else will. So it's a big part of what we do. We need to feel the pulse of the training community in our countries and let the executive committee know about it. We need to protect our specialty training and we need to, um, to make sure we are proactive in terms of what's gonna happen with our training in the future. Because there's a lot of competition as we all know. Next slide, please. So, so yeah, I mean, we, we, as I said, I mean, I mentioned the most of those things already. We had a lot of success you know, in supporting junior events, a lot of presence in social media. We've increased our presence massively. Um, we have managed to have a, a couple of collaborative projects in, uh, in Europe, most of them with, uh, with CERSI and the European Training Society. And of course, we had the cup. We managed to do a couple of uh, public engagement events with the British Medical Association and, uh, and other organizations. Next slide, please. And some some pictures that's from our last uh, BSIR uh, training committee meeting the, back in the good old days when uh, we could all meet uh, real life. And next uh, next picture, please. Our advanced practice course. Uh, I mean, needless to say, that's that all these things take a lot of work, and that's why you need to engage with your with your team. That's why you need to everybody needs to you know contribute, and that's why we need a lot of good communication, and um, and all these things help you to build your skills as a leader, as a team player, and build your communication skills. So, being a part of a training committee, I think it benefits you in multiple levels. Next uh, slide, please. This is from our um, promotion event that we did with the BMJ. Um, in the BMJ uh, career events. So basically, in the, in these are big career events that in London that are being organized every year. And we basically educate um, people about interventional roads and mostly students who come out of high school and they are thinking about careers and, and so on. Next. Um, and these are some of the of the society of the junior societies that we are supporting over the years. Um, they have been doing amazing work in terms of uh, organizing their own events and uh, being very active on social media. Next slide, please. Next slide. And I would definitely urge you to recommend you to have a look at this website, the irsjuniors.com website. It's a new initiative, relatively new initiative, but it's doing it's going very well. We created that website in collaboration with a number of uh, very talented uh, junior doctors um, in order to make this a hub for students and junior adults who are having questions about intervention reality. I know, it, and I don't need to stress how important it is to have a dedicated hub for them. Uh, it makes it so much easier to answer their questions. Next slide, please. And of course, we try to uh, participate in parliamentary group meetings and do, uh, do a bit of lobbying whenever we can and make sure our politicians know what we're doing. Um, another very, very um, important action and function of the, of, the, of the training committee group. Next, please. And two of the big projects that we did in collaboration with the European Training Forum, mapping the European uh, radiology training status and uh, a global survey on uh, satisfaction regarding interventional radiology training. So both of these projects, they took each of them took a year, maybe more, a year and a half, and it could have never, it could have never happened if we hadn't created those networks between the, all these international training committees. Next slide, please. So finally, uh, final slide. I think that you know, please carry on what you're doing. I'm very happy to see all these, um, you know, new and not so new um, junior committees. Uh, look for uh, talented people, look for for junior people who are going to continue the work we're doing. A good leader is always be, being judged by the by the people who lives behind. If you if you're not if you're not able to train the people who come after you, the, the, what you have started is going to fail. So I think it's very, very important as a leader to make sure that you have people to succeed you 
and do that successfully. Build as many research networks as you can, come to the conference, come to CERC. Uh, I really look forward to meet you all at the next CERC conference and um, of course keep promoting IR through junior events and social media. I think that's it, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Greg. This was, you know, great as always. Um, it was really interesting. So what you showed is you showed what's the what's the threshold uh, that we we can aim for. So um, it really shows that your training committee has been around for ten years, and uh, you really developed it. Um, organized it and you you have a uh, great results so i'm sure there will be a lot of questions uh, i hope you will stick with us uh, till the oh, end sure, sure sure so uh right now we're gonna proceed with uh, our final presentation so uh the final presenter is francesco Giorazza. i hope i pronounced that right so uh he's coming from italy and he will talk about their um junior committee francesco please Hi guys, good afternoon everyone. Rock, you pronounced the, 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 my name perfectly, so that's okay. Uh, I believe that a brief uh, introduction to the um, uh, Italian Society of Radiology, uh, it's, uh, it's necessary because in Italy we don't have an Italian Society of Interventional Radiology, while we have an Italian Society of Radiology it's a quite big uh, scientific societies that includes um, approximately 10,000 um, subscribers. And uh, it includes uh, radiologists working in every kind of uh, uh, hospital activities. I mean, uh, university hospital, public hospital and uh, private uh, cabinets. So uh, the uh, society is divided in multiple uh, branches and uh, interventional radiology is one of these. Uh, is named Italian College of uh, uh, Interventional Radiology. And uh, it accounts at the moment uh, uh, for uh, 898 uh, subscribers. And it has a senior committee that is elected every two years and a junior committee that is named by the senior committee uh, every two years accordingly to the election of the uh, senior committee. In the junior committee that is named Rising Star, uh, there is one coordinator and 10 members. I've been the uh, coordinator for uh, uh, two uh, assignment and I will finish my second assignment, my last assignment at the end of this month. And uh, it's, uh, the, it's a committee, the, the junior one that is, it has been established uh, back in uh, 2011 with uh, uh, an educational uh, and uh, a networking mission so uh, the, uh, the principle was that um, in Italy at that time, we needed uh, 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 an instrument, a tool to uh, make more easy the uh, dialogue between juniors and seniors interventionalists that actually uh, sometimes is not so, uh, so easy, is not so, so fluent. So uh, there were lots of uh, young interventionalists that uh, uh, cannot, they, they could not uh, share their, their experience. And, uh, you know, when, when you have a problem and uh, you don't know that other people has a similar problem to you, you feel a bit uh, loosened. While uh, if you know that your colleagues in the other part of the country has the similar uh, disease that you have or uh, as different opportunities uh, from you, it's always very important to, to, to know it. And finally, uh, the, the, the committee has the mission to promote education uh, among uh, um, young uh, interventionalists. Uh, in our committee, in the junior committee, uh, there are no students uh, and uh, uh, there are only interventionally aged up to 35. So uh, basically it's composed of uh, uh, residents and uh, uh, new interventional radiologists under the age of 35. Uh, we are a bit lucky because um, the Italian Society of Radiology has its own Congress Center in Rome. And uh, so uh, the uh, Junior Committee of Interventional Radiology had the opportunity to uh, organize uh, multiple uh, daily uh, Congress uh, dedicated uh, principally to residents. 
uh, that actually uh, focused on basic topics. As you can see, it's in Italian, but I think uh, it's easy to understand. Biopsy, uh, drainages, biliary, nephrostomy, etc. And the speakers of these uh, sessions were always a member of the committee. So interventionalists under the under uh, the age of 35 that actually presented mainly uh, cases, uh, so uh, clinical scenarios. And there was always a discussant that was a member of the senior committee that uh, led us to, uh, to clearly understand uh, what were we uh, seeing. And so he, he guided also the discussion and uh, uh, included concepts to, uh, to residents. Uh, we have been also um, uh, tutoring uh, the uh, industry simulation labs uh, at the annual Congress of the Italian Society of Radiology and at the annual Congress of our section of interventional radiology. And uh, this has been a, a really good um, uh, moment to uh, attract uh, residents to interventional radiology, especially during the, uh, the annual Congress of the Society uh, of the Italian Society of Radiology. Uh, industries uh, gave us simulators and so the members of the junior committee uh, introduced the uh, materials uh, available uh, by the industries to uh, young interventionalists so it was a very good moment to uh, to touch practically to to clearly understand which were the instruments of our uh, daily daily job uh, furthermore, um, we have uh, uh, we had the role to uh, to promote the CIRSE uh, guidelines and standard of practice in the Italian Society of Radiology in, in our uh, uh, interventional radiology section, and this is uh, quite important because um, the, the the practical uh, activity was to translate the uh, the CIRSE documents and to put it into the um, website of the Italian Society of Radiology, but. Uh, in Italy, since two years, we have a law that actually um, uh, remove any uh, any penal guilty from the operators if they demonstrate that uh, have followed the, 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 the scientific guidelines. So it's uh, it has been really appreciated by all the member of the uh, of the senior committee this uh, the, the, this activity of promotion of the CIRSE guidelines. It was very important. Uh, we always organize uh, a session at the Biannual Congress of uh, Interventional Radiology in Italy uh, that is uh, completely uh, managed by, uh, by the junior team. Uh, and as for the Congress uh, that I showed you before, for the daily Congress, here we have also uh, junior speakers and uh, senior discussants uh, that uh, uh, that guide the the, the 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 discussion that actually is the most important part of this uh, of this uh, of this session. Uh, we have also um, started, and some of them has always has also been accomplished. Uh, some multicenter uh, studies, uh, completely managed by the junior committee, and this was very gave us a, a great satisfaction because uh, some studies are uh, already available on the on the PubMed and uh, they are signed by the Italian College of Intervention or of Intervention Radiology so it was very attractive uh, for uh, for young uh, for young interventionalists to see that a junior committee produce uh, scientific papers on the on the PubMed and uh, we have created also uh, uh social media uh, pages on linkedin and on facebook actually uh, they are not only dedicated to the promotion of uh, uh, italian and the european congresses but also we use them to share uh, uh, cases and to commend them uh, and uh, finally, as already mentioned by uh, the other guys that uh, uh, have spoken before me, uh, it's really important to create uh, a good network uh, at, as, as wide as possible. And, uh, you know, during our meetings, it's uh, always a good, uh, a good moment to, uh, to, to perform brainstorming during the, 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 the Congress but uh, uh, also uh, during the, um, the, the Congress evening. 
And uh, is, this is not a provocative slide because I strongly believe that the, the best uh, ideas uh, and the most transparent uh, opinion and experience are shared during a, a cocktail uh, in a bar rather than on a, on a podium at a Congress. So uh, this is our, uh, our experience. Thank you. Francesco, can I ask something? Yes. Yeah, I can see Gigi is always with some, <laughs> with, uh, with some drinks in front of him. I mean, is, is this, uh, is she only comes for the drinks? <laughs> yes, but you know, he's very famous in Italy because he never uses credit card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, he can say it because we were uh, co residents. So we're, we are close friends. So he can say this. But you know, he knows that I'm quite generous. Well, he, he's, pay, he's paying next time around, I'm telling you. Exactly. Uh, well, <laughs> thank you very much to all of you because uh, all these presentations were quite inspiring. And I have some, some, some questions, and Rock, I think, also, uh, that I would like to discuss with you because uh, uh, we have no questions coming from the ground, but I think that uh, some, some questions um, uh, coming from me and Rock uh, may be uh, useful to start the discussion. So, for example, one of the first questions that I would like to ask to the Dutch and British uh, guys, uh, we have seen uh, two different models. So in, in the Dutch model, we have a committee made of three people, basically, so very thin, very uh, fluid. On the other side, in the British, uh, we had uh, uh, a committee, a junior committee that was uh, uh, quite reflecting the, the organization of the of the main society. So, uh, what do you feel that? Uh, what would you feel that should be uh, the best uh, organization and uh, probably a more organized and more established and more a larger organization should be? more useful once the society is, is already established, a thinner uh, and more fluid uh, organization would be probably better at the beginning. What do you feel, uh, Greg? So I, th I think there's no right or wrong way to organize the, the committee. I think that as, as long as, I think the, ma the main thing is to make sure that everybody's involved. And um, I don't think there's such a thing as, as someone being very junior. I think that's important to, if possible, uh, involve both, you know, senior fellows, junior fellows, radiology, radiology trainees who haven't started IR, but also try and involve people who are not in radiology training because these are the guys who, you know, these are the guys who are really the future, okay? So we need to try and attract as much talent as possible in, into the specialty. And that's why, especially in the in BSIR, we make sure that we have at least four or five students and non-radiology doctors like junior doctors who haven't started their training yet so they, they join the society they learn how things work they contribute with ideas and with uh, we you know with their time and their energy but you know i think overall the the exact structure it's it's you know it depends on the it depends on the society and depends how you know and you don't need loads of people i mean when we started atf there were like five six of us and now they're like 30 in sorry more than that in almost in every in every, in every uh, country in Europe. When we started, the way the society was organized, the, the training committee was organized, it was very different. It was more um, it was more flexible. It was more like you know we had to improvise a bit more. Now that we have like we are like 40 committee members, then you need to obviously be more structured. We need to create groups. We need to find a way to communicate more because there are more people, there are more voices. So I think it depends on the size, it depends on, uh, you know, the people who are involved. So I, I don't think there's one size that fits all. It's, uh, we, have to, we have to be flexible. Okay. I, I so, definitely okay. agree with uh, Gregory. Um, I think we are, um, we are still a young committee and um, we have a lot of influence from the Dutch Society of Interventional Radiology. So they actually, um, they pick the members for the junior committee um, as it is right now. Uh, I think for the future, we are aiming to include um, uh, more young um, radiology, uh, interventional radiology members uh, as we will hopefully have more tasks and more subcommittees um, 
and more activities to organize. And uh, I hope in the future we will also be able to include uh, young medical students in our junior committee as well, because um, probably as uh, is the case in the uh, rest of Europe, in the Netherlands, interventional radiology is not that familiar under the medical students as um, we would like it to be. Uh, so definitely something for the future. Okay, thank you. So uh, now I would like to ask uh, Ines, uh, who comes from uh, Portugal and uh, who are working with some colleagues of her in uh, in, his, in her country in order to start uh, a committee uh, to to briefly update us uh, uh, what the, what they are doing, what they achieved already, and what. Uh, does she feel if uh, she will be able with uh, her colleagues to start with few people or they are planning to grow rapidly? So which is, which is your experience in this? Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Casato. So, and thank you for the encouragement to establish a national committee and for organizing this amazing webinar. I learned a lot with all of your experiences. Uh, me and my doctor, doc, uh, Dr. Ron Lordo, uh, we had absolutely no doubt about establishing a national IR uh, trainee working group in Portugal uh, since the, the last ATFS uh, meeting. Uh, so, so far, talking about our experience, uh, we are at a very early stage in the process. We start by discussing some of the points uh, among us, and then we wrote a proposal for our national association, Portuguese Association of International Radiology, explaining why we are trying to establish a national IR training working group and what our goals and objectives. Uh, all of them were are very similar to and already and were already discussed in this panel, but we focused on three main points uh, like education, promoting uh, IR activities among radiology residents and cooperate in the development of a network uh, for sharing ideas for IR research projects. And I would like to know more about the British experience uh, in this. And the second point is communication social media and to support the dissemination of uh, training and scientific IR activities among residents and to promote the contact with medical schools. And uh, the third and last point is mobility, uh, to create uh, opportunities for national and even international uh, mobility opportunities. So, um, so we wrote our proposal and uh, we gladly have some feedback from the, the National uh, Association from the president, Dr. Blarmin Gonsalves, which congratulated us on our initiative and supported us. So at this point, we are rating the official communication from the association. They, are, uh, they will discuss our proposal in the next meeting. And for now, uh, one of the difficulties we have is how, with how many members we should start and um, how, how we should organize ourselves. Uh, so this, uh, so probably we will have, uh, I think uh, my personal opinion, we have to focus in uh, radiology residents, because in Portugal, uh, we are uh, all uh, general radiology residents. And uh, some of us have a special interest in interventional radiology, like me. And uh, I think we, uh, we believe we should focus on, on this group of people in radiology residents. And, but I, 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 one of the difficulties is with how many members and how we should organize ourselves. So um, I, I believe in the near future, we will work on another uh, thing like a regulation and so on. But uh, for now, this is our experience. And I appreciate if you have some comments and some and your opinions about uh, about my exposure. So thank you very much for the attention. Thank you, Ines. I think that uh, as uh, Greg said, and also the experience coming from the Netherlands, uh, shows that probably the best would be to start uh, with uh, very few people, uh, two, three, four people, and then to grow progressively because uh, uh, this would be much easier uh, to, to coordinate at the beginning. And so probably you may be more effective. Then with time, probably you need to, 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 to grow and the British experience uh, 
show and the Austrian also show definitely this. Uh, by the way, I have one question for the Austrian society. Uh, Dizzy, they... before yeah. you move on, can I just say something to Ines? So I think that, as you said, I mean, at the beginning, you know, you don't have to worry so much about elections and stuff like that. There's no point. I mean, you know, someone has to start this. And, you know, as Gigi said, you know, five, you have to find five, six people who are that you know that you're going to help you and they're going to know, you know, they're going to put time into this. And then um, you have to give them responsibility. So someone is going to do social media. Someone is going to do like the, the websites. Someone is going to do like the um, uh, more promotional stuff for medical. Someone is going to be like the point of contact for medical students and, and so on. Or the other thing you can do is you can have like um, so you so you have an international you, you have an international an intervention theology committee in your um, you have an, like a normal intervention theology society in your in Portugal right yes yes we have yes. yeah so I'm pretty sure that they, that society is organized so they have like a, they have a chair for a public engagement they have a chair for so they have the president and then they have yes. people sure. who lead various task forces. So the other thing you can do is you can uh, you can have a shadow member for every of these task forces. So maybe someone can shadow the president, someone can shadow the the treasurer, someone can shadow, you know. So maybe you can copy, in a way, the structure that the executive committee has. Okay. Otherwise, as I said, you know, for the next five years, you just you just get you surround yourself with people who are going to help you and then when you build some momentum and you, you have many people around then you can start doing uh, elections but i would uh, i would um, maybe not in the beginning but after a few years i would definitely recommend getting uh, medical students involved they they can help you a lot yeah, thank you thank you very much uh, sorry did you have a question yeah so uh, that was a great comment by Greg. Uh, Greg was mentioning medical students. So uh, when we're talking about medical students, I think that you know young radiologists, the trainee um, uh, trainee committees, they have a, a special part in addressing the, the medical students. It's the medical students feel probably better or can more uh, connect with with younger doctors than with with older doctors who are um, who are managing the the the, the national committees so i was uh, going to ask christian so uh, christian you mentioned that you you do not have a connection with medical students yet and that you are probably planning to do it is there, do you have any plan how you will do this? How you will contact them? Will you go to universities? Will you go to the, to the medical student societies? Yeah, I think, I think uh, we are just in the, in the project, project phase, not yet uh, concrete plans, but I think the idea is to go to universities, um, to, um, to job fairs for, for young students, to be present because um, I don't know how it is in the rest of uh, Europe, in Austria, interventional radiology has no place in during the medical studies. So uh, generally what we see is when we have uh, students for internship on our, uh, for example, in our department, they don't even know that what we do in interventional radiology. I think to be present, to be, uh, to, um, to go one step forward um, to the universities and also to, um, to make it um, easy to start with, uh, easy to, to get in contact with us. And I think that's the, uh, the only way is to go to universities, I think. Yeah, I probably agree. I mean, it's, it's obviously uh, very important to uh, have good contacts with the universities and with their uh, mailing list to, to contact the students. Mm. Uh, rock, rock, uh, yes. rock. Yeah, re regarding this this aspect, uh, in Italy we have the the same problem that, that they have in Austria uh, because we do not have uh, a connection with students and uh, almost an official connection, of course, with mm. with, with students. But you know, um, the problem uh, in my country uh, is that we do not have um, a, a residency in interventional radiology. Yeah. Because uh, people who want to be an interventional radiology today, a medical student, 
who want to be an interventional radiology has to perform a residency in radiology. And uh, in Italy, we have like a, a national test that the student has to pass uh, and is, in, is even not sure that he will be a radiologist. So a student that accomplishes his, med his medical degree has to pass a national test where he, uh, he describes his, uh, his desires in terms of, uh, of putting like a, a first radiology, second vascular surgery, for example, etc. And he, he has the chance to uh, become a resident in radiology. It really depends by his uh, academic, uh, by, by his institution, if he will be trained in uh, interventional radiology. Because uh, officially, from uh, uh, an academical point of view, uh, interventional radiology accounts for only six months of the whole curricula of the residency. It, do you, do, you, okay. do you keep this coming? So it's, it's not so easy for a medical student to focus on interventional radiology because he doesn't even know if he, he will become a radiology. And if he will become a radiology, yeah. he doesn't know if he will be an interventional radiology. So we absolutely need a, a specialization in interventional radiology in order to focus on the medical students, almost in Italy. Okay. Francesco, I, I know, I know, I know how you feel. I mean, it's sort of the same thing everywhere. Um, because if, even the UK, I mean, we have a subspecialty. So we have a subspecialty pathway for interventional radiology. Uh, but for example, when I started my training or when I graduated from medical school, I also didn't know I was gonna if I was gonna get a post because it's very competitive. You don't, you, you just don't know. Um, but having said that, I think that. It's it's important for us to 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 be to be out there and letting them know about what interventional radiology is. And for me, the best way of doing this is, you know, when they come in, when the when they come to the department, we need to make sure that we spend some time with them. That we need to show them around. We need to show, uh, you know, talk to them about the Italian Society of Interventional Radiology and what you do. So, for example, when I have a medical student coming to the department. I, I make sure that I grab this opportunity to brainwash them as much as I can. I mean, literally, it's like you're not going anywhere today. You're just going to stay here. And, you know, I try to invite them. I try to, you know, let them play with the kid. And, you know, students love this stuff. And I'm not doing that because I, I want them just you know, to do it, to become interventional radiologists. And that's not my main aim. Some of them will become, but some of them, they will go and do something else, but at least they will know what, what intervention real is. So there are many ways of doing this. So for example, one thing that we found very useful in doing that is that for, we, we approached the, the medical school that's affiliated to our hospital. And we said, look guys, your students, they don't spend enough time in radiology. So look, we can have an arrangement when we are gonna create a block for them to come and spend like two, three weeks with us. For those of them who, who want. So we advertise it with medical students, within the medical student groups. And we say, look, if you want to come and spend four weeks with us, you're more than welcome. Just a, write, just fill out this application form. And um, we split them out. We divide them in groups of like two or three. And they come and spend like four weeks every two, three months, something like that. But you know, very often you're going to find them you know, at, you know, wherever you, where you have to go and find them. So you have to, very often there are student events that we don't even know about. So we have to look online sometimes. And uh, very often, you know, you have to make the first call as a, as a chair of the Italian Society of Trainees, you have to keep an open mind and have your, uh, um, just, just look for these people. And very often, once you find one of them, you can find, he can help you to find more. So it's very often just finding that one person in, the, in that medical school. So you don't need to find loads of medical students in every year. You just need to find one or two usually, and then they can help you to find more. I know it's tricky. It's, it's difficult to get them because, as you said, we don't have export. We don't have the interventional curriculum is not developed in medical schools. And that's, uh, I think Gigi's running has run an interesting uh, survey on medical students. Um, right, and, um... Yeah, we we have run this this survey, and we we have two ATF members who are working on the final on the final report. 
uh, and basically we have seen that there is a huge interest uh, among students and uh, um, that at least one fourth of the of the responders were interested in starting a career in IR and many of them were interested in knowing more about IR. So either they become IR, either they don't become IR. It's interesting for us to, to show what we do because uh, at, the, at the worst, they will address patients to us. So this is quite interesting. Uh, then uh, I would like to, to ask one, one question to, to the Austrian society because uh, they, 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 they told us that basically uh, their initiative, their society was established following the uh, stimulation coming from uh, uh, the industry, which is quite unusual because they are more and more uh, uh, strict in, uh, in, uh, in uh, giving money to, to, to physicians and to their initiative. Uh, so I would really like to understand how, how this happened and what kind of benefit they had. Mm -hmm. Um, this was another time, this was 10 years ago, so nowadays they're also very strict. Um, I think that's the same everywhere in Europe. Um, the, the benefit I think that they had in the beginning was to get in contact with young interventional radiologists. It was one company that had the idea and the first meetings were also hosted by this company. So they had the idea that um, when one starts to uh, intervene, when one starts with interventional radiology, they know the products of this company more than the other do and have um, more friendly contact. I think that was the idea. Um, this is also a benefit the industry could have. Uh, I think the, the problem of many societies is the under foundation that it is difficult to, to get money to, um, to finance the organization, uh, even if it's not a lot. And, Maybe this could be a, a pathway. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't want to sell my soul to a company. Uh, I think that's more. That's also very important. But um, to to be able to um, to organize small congresses, again, you won't make it without uh, the industry. Okay. Thank you very much. And then uh, the feeling that I get from most of, of your presentations is that basically all of us are running the same kind of initiatives, meaning. Uh, social media webinars, etc. Do you feel that uh, people may be fed up with this stuff, and so we need to start to think about new modalities uh, to 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 communicate and to bring people inside? Because you know, if one, each society proposes uh, one webinar per month, uh, there will be ten webinar per month, so uh, mm -hmm. people will get lost. So probably, I think that we need to. Uh, start to think uh, about other modalities uh, and in order to be more effective, uh, of course, if COVID allows us in the near future. What do you think, uh, Francesco and uh, all the other speakers? I completely agree with you. Uh, indeed, uh, in Italy, the Italian Society, uh, the Italian College of Interventional Radiology promotes uh, like uh, a webinar per month. And uh, I, I told them that uh, the ETF was promoting uh, this kind of initiative in order to not uh, increase the number of webinars. Because uh, I know that by my side, by, I think also for you, you have like one webinar invitation per day. So you should stay every afternoon looking for a webinar and actually you get lost, as you mentioned. Uh, we everybody hope that this uh, this COVID will uh, will finish in uh, uh, 2021. So basically, once we 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 will uh, restart our uh, usual uh, physical activities, I think that we should uh, keep in mind to to plan some at the the the, the Circe Congress in September or the 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 ET in June to to find some uh, some more uh, activities and for instance the discussion of uh, clinical cases i think it's very very interesting for uh, for uh, for trainees uh, moving on the on the practical uh, part of our job not only on the on the theory or the, the far concepts from the the clinical practice we should focus on the clinical cases brief what I what I saw in your in your presentation, Francesco, was also my heart was bleeding when I saw all these people getting together and uh, drinking wine together or having a dinner together. I think you you can't you can't have this with a webinar and you can't have this connection. This this platform is not the same on a webinar. I'm sure. Totally agree with you. Mm. 
and then I think uh, Rock, uh, we, we Rock, we are discussing about uh, other because we are in charge uh, of the ETF for the next three years, and we are usually discussing constantly about new and further initiatives. So at the moment, this was uh, these were the the most uh, immediate initiatives that we could start. But of course, we would like to promote uh, other initiatives and other events that may. Uh, really change the face of IR and really may uh, play a huge impact because as Greg said before, we need to become more uh, clinicians, we need to uh, see patients, we need to produce more evidence and basically uh, these two points uh, are, uh, I think in my opinion, are, and Rock shares the same vision of mine, uh, these two points are exactly the two points that on which we need to work in order to change our our specialties and we need to and we are thinking about uh, modalities that we may use in order to make these messages pass to young generations so we are discussing about this kind of new initiatives that should go over over uh, uh, webinars and social media and and we really think that what will make a huge change in the future will be uh, if uh, the next generation coming behind us will be clinicians and will be scientists. So if they produce evidence and if they see patients, they will gain. Otherwise, they will de they will be dead. And we need, I think, to uh, to focus on this and to think to all the modalities that we have uh, available in order to make these two main messages uh, uh, passing to young generations. Rock, would would you like to add something on this? I mean, I absolutely agree with your vision. It's it's really important to incorporate the scientific part and the clinical part into the interventional radiology. It's either this or we start to exist as as a uh, we stop to exist as as a speciality, and, and that's what we will. You know, th this is on on the young on the on the young doctors on the young interventional radiologists and also on the students who will enter and who will start their career in interventional radiology. And I think uh, it's not enough to uh, look for the top to bottom approach. This, this initiative is not going to come from the top. This initiative has to come from the bottom, has to come from us, from young, uh, inter from, from young IRs. We, we are the one who has to have to change this speciality how it works, we have to evolve it. So, and I think this is what we're working on. I mean, I hope that this, that this, um, that this work will, uh, will turn into something beautiful, you know, and perhaps it's time to, to conclude this um, conversation with a presentation of our work that will take uh, place in the January. And then what do you think, Gigi? Yeah, uh, basically we are starting webinars. So, so <laughs> uh, in next January, uh, we'll try to keep one uh, uh, event per month. Uh, the speakers uh, are all selected uh, among the young IR population. So there will be guys coming from uh, the ATF. Some of these uh, uh, webinars will be uh, conducted in collaboration with other partner societies, including SEER, PEARS, and uh, the European Society of Radiology. Uh, so we will try to keep uh, a basic uh, um, organization in order to make uh, young trainees and students be aware of the basic stuff of IR. Uh, so basic procedures, basic indications, basic contraindications and complications and management. So this is something that we would like to propose uh, since uh, with the um, uh, survey that we conducted on students uh, uh, last summer, we realized that there is a huge need uh, to educate. And as a society, we can do this, but uh, the most immediate way is webinars. But of course, if you have something in mind uh, to propose and that we can do at the European level, Rock and me are very pleased to, to, to consider these uh, proposals of yours. But anyway, we would like to ask your help at the moment to um, to advertise in your countries this initiative because they may, they may be really helpful in uh, educating young generations and making them coming uh, closer to IR. So uh, if we have uh, no other questions, uh, um, 
I would yeah, just 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 one last thing. I mean, I, I think as you said, Didi, it's very important to keep working together, guys. We need to keep talking to each other. We need to uh, you need to help the ETF to, to sh because you know obviously ETF cannot reach every university in Italy or every university in Portugal. Uh, the, the national societies in every country they can reach deeper in the country and this is why you're so important in your countries to to spread uh, the message and to spread the word i mean etf can only do as much um but you you need you need to be the like the um you, you need to be the the lead you need to be leading in your countries the, this airport. you need to be communicating and talking to each other i think that's that's the main thing I mean, there are so many new ideas and things you can do and you can learn from each other, which uh, I think that's a main benefit of having a network like this. So uh, it's time to conclude. I think uh, these are our uh, social media accounts that will be very active uh, uh, starting by January. Uh, so don't hesitate also to advertise this in your countries and to follow up uh, if you if you would, would like. So um, I would like to thank uh, warmly all the speakers, my co-chairman, uh, Rock, uh, who is always uh, very, very effective in helping me and uh, in organizing uh, all the stuff of dealing with ETF. Uh, so we are very uh, pleased to, to, to have here of you and uh, to host uh, all your experience in our, in our platform. So thank you very much and hope to see you and to meet you soon uh, uh, in reality. Thank you. Take care. Thank bye you bye. all. Have bye. a good evening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.